before you watch another comedy sequel released 10 plus years after the original that will probably suck ass. Revisit the modern fairy tale that asks, what if one of those Nigerian prince scams were real? Damn, I knew I should answer that email. Coming to America. Get ready for a series of late 80s SNL sketches held together by the nuclear charisma of Eddie Murphy. When you think of garbage, think of Akeem that has him cast against type as a naive romantic, then makes up for it by casting himself as everyone else too, in a formula that works 100% of the time, 50% of the time. But it is long time in hell before Wong sucked poison out of another man's ass. Meet Akeem, yet another royal immigrant who comes to the US to take our jobs. Seriously, it's an epidemic. But he's surprisingly humble for a guy whose face is on money, and surprisingly righteous for a guy with his own dick washer. The royal penis is clean, your highness. Making him one of the only spoiled rich kids to turn out pretty cool. Not even the director could manage that. So congratulations to whichever kind-hearted nanny raised Akeem, because it was definitely not his parents. Journey to a Wakanda known as Zamunda, a fictional African kingdom thought up by white guys, rich beyond all comprehension, with a bachelor prince who's shy around girls, and the king dresses like a big cat. But a king will gladly leave the fame and fortune behind for a chance to move to New York and blatantly steal this poor schmuck's girlfriend. Yeah, I know he's a jerk, but I guess bro code into the border, huh? Along for the ride to the Big Apple is Semi, his valet? Personal trainer? Human toy? If his job is to be the royal best friend, he's terrible at it. I feel like a complete idiot. I doubt we will ever find your queen. What's not fair is me doing manual labor. Do you realize I have not had sex since we got to America? Things are going so well with Lisa. I do not care. But every king needs his queen, and Lisa is a hardworking, independent woman with principles that she'll quickly sell out for a bigger house like the rest of the boomers. If you like, we can give it all up now. Nah. And experience James Earl Jones as you love to see him most, being someone's dad. You may not be my father, sir, but you will always be my daddy. Witness a truly impressive parade of soon-to-be-famous actors, from Samuel L. Jackson getting a start as this bad mother effer. Anybody move, I'll blow your f***ing head off. To Cuba Gooding Jr. as boy getting haircut, to a young Paula Abdul choreographing the dance scenes. Even the royal penis lady got work. If Eddie and Arsenio played fewer parts, we could have had Don Cheadle in our lives a whole decade sooner. So sit back and enjoy Eddie Murphy's 80s comedy about Africans that's aged better than his other 80s comedy about Africans. I have to go off to the woods of Africa and find me some crazy, naked, zebra <laughs> that takes you back to a golden era when these two were on top of the world before they stopped working all the time and went off to enjoy their families and spend their millions. Wait, celebrities are allowed to do that? Will somebody please tell Bruce Willis? We didn't know whether to burn it or put it in a museum. I'm sure they said the same thing about me. Welcome to the party, pal. It ended many years ago. You can rest now. Starring The Nutty Successor Oh, 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 oh Burger Queen And Twins The Founder City Slicker 2, Legend of Curly's Glow, and Twins, Robert Mugabe, and, sir, this is a Wendy's, The Prince's Bride. Since this takes place in a shared universe, does that mean that Eddie has an identical millionaire twin named Valentine? It was Agatha all along. If the universe is so big, then why won't it fight me? This is getting out of hand. Now, there are two of them. Harder, better, faster, stronger. Harder, better, faster, stronger. 